Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play Mario Tennis Open. In the last episode, we took care of one of the last single tournaments we have to do. In this episode, I think I want to go ahead and finish the final cup for singles tournaments, and then we can go ahead and focus on the doubles tournaments for the rest of the series pretty much. However, I do want to talk about something first. So, I was grinding up a lot of coins, as you can probably see from my coin total right there. Um, I ground up a lot of coins in between episodes, and it made me... I slowly, slowly realized I'm pretty sure the game wants you to have 50,000 coins at one given time, which means I can't, like, use any of these coins to buy outfits to get the, uh, the out... They're the... What would it be? The costume that you get for having 50,000 coins. Because I've already gotten at least 20,000, I'm pretty sure. And I should have uh, enough to get that achievement, but I haven't yet. So I'm going to probably have that done by the next episode. But just letting y'all know, you need to do it all in one go if you want to get it. In addition to that, um, in the item, sh item shop, we do need to buy 80 items to get another one of the costumes and the absolute minimum coin amount you need to do that is 50,600 because that's how much it'll cost if you buy the absolute cheapest things from the shop. Of course that won't be the case because you're not just going to have the cheap things, you know. So just want to get that out there. I'm going to try and have those done or ready to get done by the next episode. So just putting that out there. Anyway. We're going to go back into singles. We did use our me last time, so I kind of do want to use a different character to finish up the the final tournament. And I was thinking Yellow Yoshi. Because it's it's really fun to play as power characters in the in the Star Cups, mainly because your Star Power characters are so fun to play against or play as, not against, surely not. And so, it'd be a fitting end. Anyway, as you can see, we have a brand new court here, and it's not really just pulled from that one minigame. It is actually a new court. Like, you can see the, the Good Egg Galaxy down there was not down there before. And one thing that you'll notice about this court is that every time you shoot a chance shot onto the other side of the court, I've been wanting to say this for a long time, the power is stored in the ball. And then when it hits the ground, it will then change the court under it, changing the properties of the court. So basically, uh, the basic glass bottom of this court is fastest and strongest property, but some of the parts of this court can give it different properties, such as the mushroom ground that you can see right there will have really, really high bounces. And that one vortex ground there that we saw a little, a few seconds ago, will actually make the ball start... It'll make it bounce in a different direction. This one is, of course, the same as the Bowser Court. This one's the same as the Blue Clay Court, or the Clay Court or something. I don't... Is it Carpet Court, maybe? I don't know. Ooh, also, this actually gives an actual reason to changing the court, because it will then change the court on, you know, you'll have that other player's uh, thing. Actually, no, 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 no. It changed away from me. Never mind. So that even, like, changing the court still doesn't have a reason, then. That's what it is. Yeah, it's just a really cool court, and I like playing on it. And of course, uh, only one side of the court, I guess this isn't really of course, but only one side of the court can have a different ground at any given time. Also, I need to stop going for those flat shots that I can't reach. So, uh, one good opportunity is making sure your opponent has the, uh, the weird side of the court. And, if possible, you might want to keep it on Vortex as long as you can. I'm not really going to shoot for that, but the Vortex is by far the trickiest ground to work with here. And it's there's a good reason it's not actually from one of the other basic courts, you know. Oh, that's done. You're dead. Yeah. Even the first match is going to have more than one set matches now. So that's weird. See, look at that. You see, you can get really lucky with that vortex ground. Watch this. Boom. It's out of there. It's just gone. Really, I'm sure you could base an entire match on just having the vortex ground on the enemy... On the enemy's, uh... I'm not... Enemy isn't really a good word for it. On the opponent's side. And then just hitting drop shots, hoping they just bounce way out. That is a legitimate strategy. 
and it can work for you if you, you know, just play your def defense right. So it's an interesting court. Um, the other version of this court you can unlock is, of course, just the basic version where it doesn't change every time, and it will always have the fastest ball speeds property, basically, where none of the other courts currently have that. They're all, like, some will be, like, fastest, but then only, like, second fast ball speed, but the best bounce, stuff like that. This one has best bounce, fastest ball speed. So it's it can be a challenge to play against. I do not know why I just did a simple shot there. Also, luckily, if you get the chance shots to appear, uh, they'll pretty much tell you where the ball's going to bounce if it's on the vortex ground. So you don't have to worry about that. Uh, the balls will not be able to avoid the chance shots no matter what. Just a good good thing to keep in mind is that chance shots know all, and they cannot be duped by any... Vortex, that's bad. Okay, well, this is especially bad. I'm going to want to stay close to where the... Well, it already changed. I was going to say I want to stay close to where the ball bounces. That's the strategy if you have the Vortex on your side. But we shouldn't have that for long. And a lot of the time, it might not even be worth like changing the opponent's ground. Because, I mean, some grounds are just easier to deal with than others. And that's the match. And we got the blooper racket. Now look at that price. 4,200. The entire blooper gear is one I do want to try out eventually. Uh, probably in one of the doubles tournaments coming up. Because it is... Holy moly. Like, it is so tricky. It's ridiculous. There's a reason. Oh, this one's actually going to have different grounds you can put on it. Yeah, I guess that uh, it has a random set of grounds every time. Which is interesting. Now we have the icy ground. I'm not sure if it actually adds in ice physics now. Because I do know some of these grounds do have slightly different properties than the actual one. They will always have the vortex though, of course, because that's something that's not seen otherwise in the game. So it's always going to be there. Although I do have to wonder, in exhibition, does it also rotate between them? Or does it have every single ground as an option? Or maybe it just uh, changes between every volley, you know? That would have been better off as a drop shot, to be honest. This one's gone, though. And once again, like, sometimes you might just want to not use the... Not use the chance shots. If you have a really good ground on the opponent's side, that's going to really trip them up. Luckily, it doesn't seem like the opponent's going to get any, any chance shots at all. Easily just pushing through them. Which is a little surprising, but I guess to be expected. Also, I guess it's kind of anticlimactic. I'm just using Yellow Yoshi as the as the final player in the singles cups. But I mean, eh. I mean, this isn't really the finale. I do want to have my me in the finale of the uh, doubles tournaments. Because that's really where the big difficulty of the game comes up. I guess this game really doesn't ever get hard when you're by yourself. Which is odd, because other games definitely can like amp it up on you a ton. Ultra Smash especially, it gets really hard once you get that good combo going in, uh, in the, I don't even know what it's called, it's like the Endless Mode or something. This game though just doesn't really get hard, and I know we're not playing against ace level component opponents in this one. Components, I almost said. Maybe the, the championship fight is against an ace computer player, but I don't think so, because I don't think the the developers of the game really want to force you to go against an ace-level computer player unless you're doing it, you know, on your own accord, I guess. Which makes sense, you know, completely makes sense. I kind of wish he had actually hit that down, because this is going to be tough to deal with. Unless I get that. Easy as that. Um, how long is this match? Okay, it's only three. Uh, it's only two sets, rather. So that's not too bad. Ooh, oh, now that was weird. I mean, I guess it was because he had a chance shot and I didn't get a a really good uh, rebuttal to it. Volley off of it, I guess. So that's interesting. Also, I find myself like instinctively using the slices when I really shouldn't be seeing how I'm a power character. To be fair, though, Yoshi is kind of just a semi-power character, though it really does show uh, that he is a power character still. All right. I don't know if the AI is actually programmed to predict the bounce of the vortex, but once again, you can basically just make the ball unhittable if you get a good enough bounce, so it doesn't really matter, I guess, when it comes down to it. 
against computer players or human players though yeesh i don't even think this uh this board actually this board this court comes up in online simply because it's way too wacky it might though i'm not really sure it's just been so long since I've played online, and it's not like I'm going to get uh, the opportunity anytime soon. I have considered that uh, if I turn both of my 3DSs on at the same time and put them both on finding an online match, I could just grind the online stuff through that. Boost shoes, getting a lot of tricky stuff this time. I could just grind out all my online points on that. Although, it'd be weird. I feel like once I get to a certain, like, battle power or whatever it's called Ooh, also there's specific music for the finals cup finale so it's interesting the music here is just really good Ooh, the sand one's going to be a really a really tricky one to deal with if you get it here and there's the peach's castle ground mm, it is kind of weird too with the uh with the ground always changing like this it's kind of hard to retain where the ball is this wouldn't be a problem of course if it was like a home console tennis game but being on this tiny 3ds screen sometimes the ball just kind of blends into the background especially when it's changing like this and especially if you're going to do uh flat shots on this vortex ground look at that it's gone it's completely gone that random bounce is devastating and we've been honestly getting pretty dang lucky with it i just don't want him to give me the ground I'd rather not deal with whatever it gives me. Though I guess, like, the Peaches Court is pretty tame. Although I wonder if, uh, if I get the Peaches Court, will it, will my side be blue and his be pink? Like it is in the actual Peaches Court? Just gotta wonder, you know. Anyway, like, like as you can see, this is not an ace computer player. This is not nearly as much challenge as an ace computer player can give us. And even when we do do the challenge to beat an ace computer player, we don't have to have them on a star a star power character. Like, it doesn't have to be a star character that we play against, which is interesting. You would think that for, like, the ultimate challenge, which would be, you know, beating it. Oh, that was dumb. That was silly. He shouldn't have been able to hit that, but it hit the net. Um, you'd think they want the final challenge to be as hard as possible, so, you know, they'd make it to where you have to be an ace star character. But that's just not the case. As long as it's an ace character... Ace difficulty character, they count it. So I might just self-impose the challenge that I have to beat a star character. And I think I'm just going to make it Mario, just so, you know, it's about the most all-around character. There's not any specific, like, trick you can do to beat him. It's not going to be a super slow power character. It's not going to be a weak technique character. It'll just be beating an all-around star ace opponent. Though it will be a little awkward because we're kind of fighting Mario here. And we will uh, unlock the ace difficulty right after this tournament, basically. Oh, yeah. It's kind of unlucky he got that chance shot to appear over there. All right, that's okay. He's getting his side of the court destroyed now, too. How much longer do we have? Okay, we need to win two more sets, I believe. And then this game's ours. So yeah, I was correct earlier also. You never really are forced to play against an ace character, and you're not really forced to do a seven set match where it plays you makes you play up to a minimum of four sets. Like, ugh, that would have been so exhausting if they did make you do it. But luckily, it's like, that's a good thing. That's It's really good in this game when they have the forethought to add the options to make a game longer then it requires you to do and have the option to make a character an enemy ai harder than you know it would ever force you to do it and i find it really interesting also the fact that they have a basically an achievement for beating the hardest ai difficulty so you have a bit of a a bit of a reason to actually fight them also that was weird the second bounce was actually affected by the vortex while the first one wasn't and yeah i do know it's because it was vortex but you know it was because the, the shot itself created the vortex. Oh, that was the wrong kind of shot. Oh, wow. He just got a lot of chance shots there. Not really much we could do. Oh, boy. We have the vortex. Oh, that sucks. I'm just going to kind of have to play it really close. There we go. Mmm. That's going to destroy me. Until I get a good... 
Like, look at how that, look at that distance. At least I got it off of me so we can pretty much end it out with the deuce. But you can see how devastating that is for a human player. There's no way to predict it unless you got a chance shot on the screen. So you just gotta kind of hope you don't get a chance shot. Oh, I thought I was going to be on it. Okay, that's fine. I kind of like the bounce that the uh, princess court is giving me. Also, it is also pink. It's not blue for me, oddly enough. Interesting. Oh, I didn't make that. All right. Second to last game. Let's go. That'll be it. Yeah. It seems to me that the ball always bounces outside when you're on a vortex. If you hit it at a very bizarre angle like that. Who also, one thing I want you to imagine. Imagine playing a tricky character while your opponent has the vortex. Or imagine the enemy being a tricky character while you have the vortex. Imagine how horrible that would be to play against. Anyone who plays against a boo main has my condolences. Or anyone who had played against a boo main has my condolences. Hmm. It just, once again, I, I keep coming back to this point. Also, championship point. We could... Let's do this. Ugh. Ugh. It's important. Oh, he's gonna ace me. Oh, good lord. Nope. Oh, I got hit with it. Okay. Uh, anyway, getting back to my point. I really do hope that aces does spar a bit of a bigger competitive community. Because I would love... I would absolutely love for there to be, like, you know, like, official... Not official, I guess, but Mario Tennis Tournaments. Imagine that. Imagine a world where there's Mario Tennis Tournaments. And that would be one game I'm already good at. Like, that'd be the one tournament I think I'd feel confident I could win majority of the time. So that'd just be super exciting for me. It's just sad that, like, it'll probably never happen. Just because I don't think tennis is a technical enough game to create a tournament like that. Also, look at this trophy. It is super cool. Blum. There you go. There is the World Open. One thing I do have a goal for this game, kind of, is I would not be opposed to someday absolutely 100%ing this game, beating all the tournaments with all the characters. I have to wonder how long that would take, and if anyone's ever done it. Ace level computer play opponents. Yeah, we might do that at the beginning of the next one. Also, we unlocked the Galaxy Arena, which actually does play. Oh, we've unlocked the Mario costume as well for beating the Finals Cup. Cool. I don't know if we actually unlock the other version of the Galaxy Arena. Um, I don't want to see this yet. Uh, it is required viewing. I cannot skip it. Luckily, it seems to go really fast. Not sure why it scrolls that fast, actually. Anyway... I might, like, get a screen set up to where it's actually going straight up into it. I don't know how I'll do that. Uh, that'd just be weird. I could just show this screen. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Anyway. Yeah, just having, like, a competitive tennis game. Like, I I hope that the next... That Tennis Aces is a lot more mechanically hard than the previous tennis games. Just so it can be a game that maybe could be considered as a competitive game at some point. It's just like, being good at tennis, Mario Tennis, it's like, that's nothing, that's not even close to like the skill required or the time invested to getting good at, you know, like Smash Bros or something like that. Or even like ARMS or Splatoon, you know? And it's kind of a shame. I just really like, if they really push that with Mario Tennis Aces, it could easily become like, not an eSport, but just a game they have a, a tournament of every now and again. Like ARMS or Pokemon. That Mario, that maybe an official Nintendo tournament. That would be so cool. I would die of excitement. Because I'm actually good at this game. I just, I just never ground out um, online. Because either, you know, Ultra Smash was trash. Or uh, Mario Tennis Open just didn't have as much of an install base as you know, some of the previous games, sadly. Anyway. Oh, wow. That is a very high saturation image. I'm not sure why. But, uh, whatever. We did it. Can I at all get past the screen? Jeez. Yeah, that does it for these singles tournaments. 
And all that leaves us with is... Let's see, I need to grind to 50,000 coins in between episodes. We have two more doubles tournaments to go, and then we need to beat an ace-level computer opponent, and then we're done. So I'll see you all in the next episode when we start taking care of the rest of the doubles tournaments. See you all then, and goodbye. Thank you.